What's up all you lovers of literature and language? This is Mr. Bear with the first in a series of videos that will cover important topics in high school English. I present to you... Bear Essentials! Language Arts! So here's the deal. Watching online lectures can be even more boring than in-person lectures. <laughs> So I'm creating shorter versions of my full-length classroom lessons that provide all the basics without giving a lot of extra information, added detail, or that rambling, which is kind of a standard feature of my presentations. Now listen, some of you may need or want those longer lectures, especially if you're starting from square one on a particular topic. And let's face it, some of you want to hear my totally not geeky voice for as long as you possibly can. What is wrong with you anyway? But if you're just trying to get the bare essentials, bare essentials, then I've got you covered. Now I know all you hip, young, modern kids need something that's funny and entertaining and something that makes you go, yeet. Oh, and by the way, if you want to leave suggestions for future videos, go ahead and post them in the comments below. I'll make sure to do as many of them as I can before I go viral, get monetized, start making that serious cheddar, and quit teaching for So let's get rolling on our first lesson, which is about identifying and analyzing tone. So, I'm going to be taking you through the four steps necessary to identify and explain the tone in a selection. Step one, you got to read the selection. Step two, you need to identify an appropriate tone. Sometimes, if the selection is lengthy or complex, there might be more than one. Step three, find good examples from the text. And step four, write an explanation that shows the connection between your identified tone word and your examples. Make sure to pause the video if you need more time to read in order to catch up. I'm going to be throwing a lot of information at you, so make sure to hit that pause button when you need to stop. So as you can see from the blue highlighting, the first step is really important. Reading carefully is crucial to doing a good job on your analysis. It helps you to see things that you didn't see on a first read. First reads are often just for comprehension. So here's the text that we're going to be using for this lesson. It's a poem called Roaches by Peter Wilde. I'll be reading it aloud, but if you'd like to read it for yourself, now would be a good time to pause or you can fast forward past my reading. And if you want a little preview of the tone, I'll throw in some background music too. Last night when I got up to let the dog out, I spied a cockroach in the bathroom, crouched flat on the cool porcelain, delicate antennae probing the toothpaste cap and feasting himself on a gob of it in the bowl. I killed him with one unprofessional blow, scattering arms and legs and half his body in the sink. I would have no truck with roaches, crouched like lions in the ledges of sewers, their black eyes in the darkness alert for tasty slime, breeding quickly and without design, laboring up drain pipes through filth to the light. I read once they are among the most antediluvian of creatures, surviving everything, and in more primitive times, thrived to the size of your hand. Yet when sinking asleep or craning at the stars, I can feel their light feet probing in my veins, their whiskers nibbling the insides of my toes, and neck arched, feel their patient scrambling up the dark tubes of my throat. So, step two is identifying the tone. Now what I've done here is give you an example of a list of tone words. There's lots of different tone words available. In my lesson, I've linked a couple of different lists uh, on Canvas, uh, but there's a whole bunch of different uh, lists that are online, so you can check them out whenever you want. Just Google tone words or tone bank, and you'll find plenty. And by the way, it's really important that when you're looking at a list like this, you take the opportunity to improve your vocabulary. There might be words on here that you don't know, and so it's a great opportunity to grab that phone, hit Google, and try to find some definitions for these words so that you can have a better idea of what's just the right word to pick when you're talking about tone. Now, for this poem, we've got a few different categories on our list, but we know that the tone is definitely not positive, and it's definitely not with a lot of humor or irony or sarcasm. There might be a little bit of that, but we know that this is pretty much a negatively toned poem. I mean, it's pretty obvious that this guy really doesn't like roaches, but what 
word really indicates his specific attitude towards roaches in this poem. Now might be a good time for a pause. So, did you notice what was probably the best word to choose off of that negative list? It's this word. Disgusted. Disgusted really fits here. There's a lot of good examples and evidence in this poem that shows that roaches creep this guy out. So, now that we've read the poem and we've identified a tone word, we need to find some evidence. Where in this poem does it really clearly indicate that this guy is disgusted by roaches? Well, if we take a look at the poem, we can see that all of these highlighted words give a really good indication of disgust, and they're scattered all throughout the poem. So this would be a good opportunity for you to pause and to make sure that you can see how all of the different highlighted examples might contribute to a disgusted tone. So go ahead and go ahead and take a minute and I'll, I'll just sit here in, in pause mode. You done? So, now that we have our evidence, step three, we're ready to move on to the explanation, step four. Now, because this is a video, I'm not going to cover all of the specifics of our paragraph format. You should check with your individual instructor about the best paragraph format for you. But what we will do is take a look at what the paragraph will look like piece by piece. So don't forget to pause. So as you take a look at this first sentence, remember, this is my example that I created with words from my brain. Your results are going to vary because you haven't been doing this for 30 years. Just make sure and do your best, use plenty of evidence, and remember that in the world of analysis, more is more. Don't skimp on the details. So here we have our opening sentence. The topic is established along with the title and the author of the piece. All we have to do is state what the point of the paragraph is. In this poem, the author creates a disgusted tone. Done. Now, the next paragraph element that I've added here is refining that main idea. You can use this opportunity to limit the topic or provide definitions or go into one extra layer of detail. Notice here how I've demonstrated how I know what the word tone means by providing an alternate definition for it in that sentence. Now, in this next part, our first piece of evidence or support is actually a few different isolated single words from the same place in the poem that are kind of clumped together to form one basic example. If you're talking about using single words, this is a really good technique to use. All right, now we're getting serious. This is my explanation. Please notice that it's several sentences, not just one, and I use it to connect my identification of the tone word with the evidence that I use to support it, and I try to explain that as fully as I possibly can. That's a really important step. It shows my thinking. Do that. Always. Now, this looks like a big jump, but all I've really done is provided a second little clump of examples or, or support, and I've added another piece of analysis or explanation. This looks like a huge step forward, but it's really just doing the same thing I already did one more time. It provides way more depth, and it demonstrates that you can find examples from multiple places in the poem. Two examples aren't always the best choice. Sometimes if you have a lot to say about one really, really super important example, that can be a good technique. But most of the time, you're trying to show that you can find several examples and show how those examples might relate to each other to demonstrate a fuller sense of tone throughout the entire piece. So in, when in doubt, go with two examples or more. And finally, at the end, you can see that we have a concluding sentence, which is really just taking the opening sentence and rearranging the words a little bit. It doesn't add any new information. It doesn't do anything special. It just kind of ties up the package of the paragraph with a little bow. And so, there's the finished paragraph. It's huge! That may be your reaction, but really, it's just a bunch of smaller pieces that are carefully put together and have a larger purpose in mind. So, there you have it, the four steps that can help you effectively identify tone and then write a really solid analysis. Just remember that the reading is the foundation. The more thinking and reading that you do, the better your writing is probably going to be. Thanks for watching. Make sure to hit those like and subscribe buttons. I don't have any idea what they do, but it couldn't hurt. And don't forget to leave suggestions for future videos in the comments below. We'll see you next time on... Show!